Welcome to Sheep School. So today we are in the sheep shed. I'll just show you the. Uh, it's pretty full today now. Um, we have all the sheep in. That little bit of snow uh, changed things a bit. Left us bringing the sheep in a bit sooner maybe than planned. But not to worry. It's good to have them in. The weather's taking a bit of a turn for the worse. So lambing time is upon us. And like all jobs to do with lambing, they're generally left to the last minute. Some people might relate to that, some people probably won't. But anyway, that's the way I operate. So, I'm just getting my lamb feeder. This is my Adlib lamb feeder for the pet lambs or kid lambs or foster lambs or I don't know. Every, some people have different names for them. So, this is a... Uh, feeder that I made up myself so I'll just give you a bit of a run through on it on how it works and I have a couple of modifications to make on it it served me well for two years it reared about 20 pet lambs last year uh, so it's a homemade device uh, there's a couple of components that I bought but the rest of it is generally made up here at home so I'll give you a bit of a, a rundown on how I made it and how it works and uh, let's get started. So, on this particular machine, uh, you'll see I have uh, three. There's, there's three feeding teats on it. So I have one here. I have one here, and I have this side as well. So you'll notice a cup here. This cup here, I've actually fitted. It's. Uh, I had a problem with uh, lambs. Older lambs, you know, when they get to maybe three or four weeks, that last week before weaning, uh, and one lamb sucking away at the teeth, and another lad comes in and butts them, and then he pulls the teeth, and you're basically putting a teeth on every day. Uh, so I came up with this idea of putting a, a cup over the teeth like this. See that? So this just screws onto the box here. And basically all that is, is a center tube of a bale wrap, your um, plastic, and it's just cut a section of that. It's rounded a little bit here so it doesn't hurt the lamb's nose. And it's just the right width that the lamb can just get his nose in and suck the teeth. And uh, as soon as I put these on, I'd say I was getting maybe 10 days out of the teeth as opposed to one day. And... Uh, yeah, it's definitely saved a lot of work uh, changing teats and the cost of them as well and the hassle. And what actually was happening was once the end of the teat was ripped off, the lambs weren't able to suck them out properly. So uh, yeah, it's a good, it's a lifesaver that cup. Um, now, so how does it work? So the lamb feeder is just a plywood box with a hinge lid, as you can see. So I'll give you a look inside it. So it's quite simple. Uh, you see the hinges on the back of it. Yeah, they're just two little steel hinges. So the principle of it is uh, now I know people might think I'm crazy making my own feeder, but look, it's significantly cheaper. And the reason I like this feeder is because I know this feeder is available. There's two different types. There's one that keeps the milk warm indefinitely keeps it at a certain temperature and then there's another type of feeder which has a similar operating principle to this where the milk is set aside and uh, as the lambs draw the milk through the teat it's warmed as it's sucked through the line uh, so this one works on that principle and the reason i like that is because the cleaning is a lot less because your milk is sitting at ambient temperature it's not sitting at 25 or 30 degrees or whatever you have your thermostat sat at mm -hmm. so the cleaning is minimal uh, basically when I'm feeding the lambs uh, I make up a, a bucket of milk replacer and the only cleaning I ever do is the actual bucket which is about once a week I just clean out the bucket and give it a bit of a wash but uh, and it seems to work well I've no major problems in that front um, but yeah we'll have a look at the operating principles so uh, inside the box is it's just a drum that fits inside here so the drum is filled with water uh, there's a 
thermostatic heater, uh, which I see if I can find that. Yeah, so my thermostatic heater is. So that is my heating element. Uh, basically, all it is is uh, from a fish tank, from an aquarium or a fish, just a bigger fish tank for tropical fish where the temperature has to be maintained above a certain temperature. So it's, uh, I think it's 300 watts that uses. So uh, you can actually set the temperature. You can see you can set it from uh, 18 up to 32. Now I have it set to maximum temperature, but you can adjust the temperature there. You can, I'm not sure if you can see that. You can adjust the temperature. So I leave it up to the maximum because uh, it's not a big wattage. And as the milk, as the cold milk is drawn through it, uh, this element's job is to bring the temperature of the water, maintain it at the 32 degrees. Uh, now I don't think. I haven't actually checked it, but I, I, I don't think that the milk coming out of the teeth is going to be at 32 degrees. I'm sure it's going to be a bit less by the time it's uh, drawn through the heating element and the pipe work, it's going to drop a couple of degrees. Um, but the way I operate this is, so I put the pet lambs onto it uh, on warm milk, and after about a week or 10 days, I switch them over. I can have, we'll say, two teeth on warm milk, and then I can have a third teeth on uh, cold milk. So, so it comes directly from the bucket without running through the hot water. Uh, and that way they're less inclined to gorge themselves. Um, so yeah, the, the heating element. So the heating element actually just drops, you'll see it here, it just drops inside the drum like that heating element uh, so that's it it's submerged it's actually submerged in the water in the drum now I'm actually going to make a modification on this so I'm going to give you I just said I'd run through the, the way I had the system running so you may be familiar with these plates these are the ones that are designed for fixing to uh, the bars of a hurdle and access to the, I'll just spin you around here, you'll see the teeth is actually f uh, fed in from the back. So access is actually from inside the box. So this, this nut here has to be loosened off uh, in order to take the teeth out. And uh, that is the reason why I'm making this modification. You'll see you screw the, you can screw the back plate off and then you take your teeth out that way. And then your new teeth is fed in, I'll just grab a new teeth here. So your new teeth is fed in from the back then and the back plate screwed on. So it's pretty packed inside the box, but you've all the pipe work and all the rest inside it and changing the teeth was actually a tricky job. So I'm modifying it. I'll give you a look at uh, a different type of a teeth. So I'm going to fit actually a different type of a teeth onto the box. It's a... Uh, external uh, fitted teeth. Pretty hard to get your hands on these. These are readily available. There's no problem getting these. Cheaper and cheerful. These are a little bit more expensive, but I don't mind. So uh, this system uh, actually, I'll uh, just pull it out here. So this system actually, uh, you, you have to drill a hole in the box. That's like a back plate that's fixed onto the box like so. And then your um, teeth is fed into the nut like so and tighten on like that. So it's much easier to uh, fix the teeth on because uh, it's all done from the outside and uh, you've no going inside the box at all. You, you shouldn't have to lift the lid if you want to change the teeth. Now as well as that there's a nice addition to this type of a teeth. It comes with a cup. I'll give you a look at that. So this is your standard nut that holds on the teeth and uh, the modification that's available for it, which would kind of swing you more towards this, is it's a it's a built-in cup to stop them damaging the teeth. So you feed your teeth in from the back, and that actually replaces the nut completely, and uh, it's all fixed from the outside. And then you have your um, teeth and cup all built into one. So I'm just going to modify. I'm taking off all these back plates. I'm going to put on this. I'll give you a look at the way the pipe work is run uh, that brings the milk from the bucket out as far as the teeth here. So basically this is the secret. Uh, 
what name could you give that? It's a transfer element. So basically it's a little piece of, uh, it's actually brake pipe. I think it's quarter inch brake pipe. It's quite flexible, it's easy enough to bend it. But I'll give you a look maybe at um, how I made that. It's just, it's quite simple, I just wrap it around the steel pipe and you get that coil. So I'll just show you here how to wrap the coil. Once you can fix one end, because I'm using this type of clamp, it's reasonably simple, I can slip it down to one side. So you just follow the pipe, like this. This basically sits down in the warm water, so the element, the element heats the water and this sits down in the water and transfers the heat, the milk goes through this uh, element here. So basically it's quite simple, the pipe work, this is your gauze uh, that drops down in your bucket of milk, so I just put a, it's a 12 mil, M12 mil nut, that's a little bit of extra weight to keep it down in the bottom of the bucket. and. Uh, your milk comes up through, so this pipe is just connected on to the coil here. Uh, it's just fed on like that. So the quarter inch pipe is a good size for the rubber hoses that come with these uh, teats. And then you have your non-return valve or your one-way valve. So uh, you just check your arrow of direction on that. So uh, that just feeds on to the other end here. And uh, yeah, so that's basically it. That's down in your bucket of milk. Your milk is drawn up through the tube by the lamb sucking the teeth. Uh, so that brings the milk up through. It draws it up through the one way, the non-return valve, uh, which you have to have on the system. So I'll just give you a look here. So that's the drum inside the box. There's your teeth. Your element is down in the water. I don't actually have any water in it yet because I have them a couple of modifications to make, but I'll just show you here. So your element just sits down inside the drum like this. I have it wrapped around a certain type of pipe so that it actually fits in nice and comfortably in through the lid of the drum. So it just slots down like that. And then this end of the teeth, uh, this end of the pipe work I should say, just slips onto your, the back of your teeth like that. And then this part of your pipe, uh, you'll see I have a couple of notches here for uh, basically the pipe just fed out through there. The pipe work is fed out through that and the lid leg closed down and your pipe isn't restricted in any way. And then that sits in your bucket. Now I had been using, uh, I had tried the bucket up on top which is technically a good idea but in theory it wasn't a good idea because you had a problem of uh, siphoning. Uh, basically where gravity, when your teeth would wear a little bit and from the lamb sucking it in a few days uh, and the teeth would start dripping, th that dripping was able to actually suck the milk out so it was continuously dripping. So the only solution really was put the bucket of milk down on the outside of the box which works well because I'm able to keep it outside the pen altogether and uh, the lambs can't actually get near that so I put this side of the box uh, along a gate or a hurdle and then your milk bucket of milk just sits there like that so uh, that is uh, the way the pipe walk runs so I only have two elements for it uh, so with the third teeth I just use it directly into the milk so it's just your pipe with your weight on the end and it connects directly to your teeth so it doesn't actually run through the warm water at all so it means then that I can have one teat set aside for um, when the lambs get older. I split the pen, so I, I run a gate from, we'll say, here. So I use these two teats as uh, the, warm, the warm milk, and then this one on this side connects directly to the cold milk. So it comes directly from the bucket of milk, and then that prevents them gorging. Um, so maybe I'll get this new uh, backplate fitted. 
I actually have three new ones. I want to replace all of these and uh, get that done now. Now, that is uh, the hole that had to be, it's quite a big hole uh, to accommodate the, the back plate. Um, and if you're using this type of uh, teeth, uh, the hole only needs to be the diameter of this pipe, so you get away with a lot smaller. So I'll just fix this on here now. Now, just before I screw this on, if you're wondering, the center of the teeth, the height, 14 inches, that's the height I had, I've been using this few years now with this box and uh, yeah it seems to work well, you can get the smaller lambs will suck and the bigger lambs will bend their neck so. Three teeth are connected here. I had to put that one onto the back plate because the, the back hole was too big to catch the screws, but the plastic will work for that one. So three new teats. Should improve the job a good bit. So that's the teats replaced. We'll soon have it up and running. Now that's the drum full of water. I use the kettle. I have it up to temperature. Some of these lambs are getting hungry. I want to get sheep out. So I'm going to put a couple of the triplets onto it straight away. And uh, because if I filled it with cold water and tried to use the element, it'd take it. I think it'd take it most of the day to get it up to 32 degrees, but it's able to maintain that temperature once it has it up. So we use the kettle, I've one more full kettle to go in. So it's ready to go, going to get it set up in a wee pen, a couple of lambs onto it, and we'll show you it in action. So yeah, I have to get power to this, plug this in, the element needs to be plugged in all the time. So we'll get that done next. So that's all set up now. Heating elements plugged in, pipes already drop into microplacer, close her down. Uh, all we need to do now is mix up some milk, drop the pipes into the milk, get a couple of lambs, and we'll uh, see if it'll work. I have my feet already here, just going to mix up a couple of litres of microplacer, and I'll show you the technique I use for mixing the milk. Uh, time saving labour saving. I'll give you a look at it and see what you think. Now, this is the secret weapon. So that's the bucket of milk mixed. So the feeder is inside the pen, the bucket of milk stays outside the pen. So I just drop it in here, it's right beside the sink so it's handy for mixing here. So this is one of the pipes that come out of the feeder. Just drop that into the milk like that. The bit of a weight holds it down and into the bottom of the bucket. And that's it, ready to go. Oh I'll just give you a look actually at the uh, device that I use for mixing the milk if you're interested. It's uh, just a simple thing that goes into the cordless drill, like so, and uh, the drill does the mixing, does the churning. I find it very good, if you have a big batch of lambs, maybe 15 or 20 lambs, and you're mixing up a big volume of stuff, this is a serious time saver. If you're mixing a big deep bucket of stuff, you can get it done very, very quickly with this. So that's it, next job, we'll get a lamb or two, get them onto the feeder and see how that goes. Now my feeder's set up here, I have a hungry little lamb here behind me. 
This lad here is a triplet and Mammy run, she was running a high temperature, I'm not just sure why, but she was very slow to come to her milk, so uh, he's quite hungry, so hopefully he'll um, take a wee suck on the feeder first here. So that's it, I actually feel the milk is nice and warm coming through that coil already. This is one of the most important parts of the job. Uh, it's actually the workbench uh, because bending over, holding the lamb onto the feeder to get them going is a disaster. It's just very hard in the back. So I do find that just sit in the drum and hold my lamb here, get them going on. You only have to get them going once or twice, maybe three times. Depends how dopey he is. Some of them you can just drop them in. When you have other lambs on it, you just drop them in. They'll watch the other lambs on it and they'll get onto it fairly quick. They'll see them rooting at the teeth here. So when I'm not using that, i just leave it up here out of the way. But anyway, I'm gonna get this lamb on it and uh, see if it's up. That's my little triplet. He's a decent lamb. Uh, we'll try him here and see. Nearly go himself. <laughs> now, so when I'm just training them, I put me two thumbs behind their ears like this and just stick your finger in their mouth onto the teeth. There you go, he's sucking away there already now. Now granted I do have to hold him on it. Now Maria's on camera work here. Come on in a bit closer Maria and you'll show him actually sucking here. So hands behind the ears like that. I just open his mouth, get him onto the teeth then you can take your finger out. So you'll see him sucking away there. He is pretty hungry when he's sucking that fast. So this boy's sucking away here. You'll see he's working away now. I just have to hold him a few times. But three, two or three times, maybe four times of doing this, he realise he's getting fed. Uh, and I find it very useful, this machine, because you have warm milk on demand whenever you need it. So if you see a lamb that's struggling a bit with its mother, it's very easy to just grab them out of the pen, stick them on the feeder, give them a wee suck rather than mixing up, messing with bottles. So there's always a bit of cold lamb like sitting there and coming out this end then is uh, warm milk uh, whenever you need it. So it's a, it's a bit of a time saver when you're actually uh, in the middle of lamb and it can be very time consuming these pet lambs. I, I see uh, there is very good ideas for dropping bottles into you know, into racks and the lambs who come along and work away themselves. But you still have to mix up a fresh mix every day. You have to clean the bottles every day. Whereas this job, uh, it's on demand, as and when you need it. If you have a lamb struggling, throw them in the pen. When you have a spare minute, just go through the ones that look a bit empty and uh, give them a suck. There we go. As me lamb fed, uh, I know with the price of milker place, it's not the most profitable job at the minute, but what do you do with these lambs? If you're going to sell them and you're waiting on somebody to come, your lamb is hungry, you're still going to be messing around with a bottle, mixing, feeding. Uh, I find it's just time I haven't got. Whereas the feeder here, myself or Maria or Robbie or whoever's in the shed at the time can come and stick the lambs on twice or three times a day, the ones that are struggling. So, look, am I going to feed lambs this year? I'm not sure. I don't know. I fed them last year and it was a waste of time financially. But again, what are you going to do with them? Uh, we'll see. I'm sure there will be lambs on it. It's here. It's handy. Uh, buy a few bags and... It's a break-even kind of a job. It's like the first video I done, the, the zero profit lambs. But yeah, look, it's probably worth my while rearing the females. The ram lambs, I would uh, happily let off as pets. 
Uh, but we'll see if there's a market for them there. If they're renting like the calves are at the minute, I believe they're giving away calves. There's nobody to buy calves at the minute. I heard of freezing bulls making seven, eight euro in the mart. So what's a pet lamb going to be worth? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Look, we'll see. He needs a bit of company now. He's in the pet on his own. So uh, I'm sure we'll find something between now and morning. But that's it. That's the lamb feeder. Quick run through of it. I hope you found it useful. And if you did, give us a like, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.